welcome everyone to our latest uh, community hangout. Um, feels like it's just going to be a bit of a uh, catch-up episode <laughs> this time around. We haven't had a chat for a couple of weeks, um, so I thought it'd be an opportunity just to kind of just do a, a quick progress update on where we are with some of the deliverables um, and have a chat about the, um, the activity list, um, particularly the editor's draft that I uh, pushed out this week. Um, and uh, Jamie shared some things with the list, which we can uh, um, uh, go through and discuss, or just take a look at um, towards the end of the call. Um, he shared some uh, information on how my local pitch manage availability and booking. Um, thought it was timely to kind of share that because I think we need to start thinking about what our roadmap is for uh, the next phase of the work. So uh, let me share my slides. So yeah, uh, so agenda, I'll just do a quick update to start with on the, the latest spec revisions and then um, dig into the, the activity lists in a bit more detail, which is where I'd like to have a bit more of a discussion today. Um, so uh, latest updates on the deliverables. Uh, I'll just step through this. I wasn't sure how up to date everyone was with the, the emails on the list. Um, so I've uh, pushed out um, updates to um, a number of the, um, the specifications and documents this week um, to help uh, move things uh, forward with our plan to get um, some of these documents uh, finalized. So the, the modeling specification has gone out with a, a number of revisions. Um, so the bulk of this was uh, changes that we had queued up in the, the editor's draft that we took a look at on our last call. Um, uh, there were also a, a couple of other amendments that I made based on the discussion that we had on that call um, and on the list subsequently. Um, so the new properties that have gone in uh, are um, level, uh, so describe a kind of uh, beginner or so beginner, you know, beginners, medium, uh, sorry, beginners, intermediate or advanced level or similar categorization for uh, events. Uh, broader category property for just applying tags to events. Um, uh, is coached allows you to indicate if a, an event is coached without necessarily saying which coach or which person is involved, um, which might also be useful um, for uh, any organization that's a bit wary about publishing a personal information, they can at least indicate that there will be a coach at an event, uh, if, even if they don't name them. Uh, leader property we discussed before, so that's person, personal organization leading an event. Um, and then the couple of extra properties are around uh, basic attendee information. So broad property, property capturing, um, just general instructions for attendees, but also a more specific one to cover the use case around where a meeting point might need to be shared. Uh, so if uh, an event is taking place at a larger venue, you might, be, you might need to direct attendees to a particular spot to meet up and get started. Um, so all of those we've had discussion around already. Um, I've also revised the section on um, how we plan to extend and version the spec in future. Um, so one of the points that was made uh, when I uh, proposed that we, we move forward in getting a 1.0 version of the spec released is that we ought to have some statement in the spec around backwards compatibility. Um, so I've included some stuff there. So uh, commitment that we will aim to add properties uh, to preserve the meaning of, of current properties and um, deprecate properties rather than just removing them from the spec. Um, so that should work towards uh, minimizing the impacts on any published data. Because what we don't really want to do is make any published data invalid according to the specification. Um, so there's a number of clarifications there. Um, and then generally just some just general tidy up and housekeeping on the spec, uh, a couple of typos and some wording fixes. But I've also put in some cross references to some of the other deliverables. So in particular, the model inspect now references the activity list and encourages organizations to, to use that uh, where it's suitable. Um, I've also, um, We've also, I can't remember how much we discussed this on the call uh, uh, last time, um, but uh, there was a suggestion that we, we ought to have a way 
to allow the community to experiment with um, uh, new properties, so new ways to extend the model uh, in a kind of, I guess, safe space um, uh, without necessarily having to include all of those properties in the, uh, the draft specifications. So we've, uh, we've created this uh, beta namespace where we can start to put um, some properties that are still going to be under discussion, whose uh, meaning and scope might change in a way that's a bit looser than we'll be doing now for the main uh, the main spec and the main namespace where we're trying to make stronger guarantees around versioning. Um, so that, that's quite an, uh, an early document. Um, I've included some links in there to the, the documentation as it is, um, but I've got an action to uh, put together a bit more process documentation around there so uh, people are clear about how and when that uh, namespace will be useful. Um, the real-time paging specification has been uh, uh, updated, uh, but I need to um, get that published today. Um, the really the main change there is it now refers to the modeling specification. So um, while the, the, the paging spec that people are using to publish uh, their opportunity data currently um, is fairly agnostic to the type of data that's been published, um, we want to encourage people to conform to the model inspect where it's appropriate. So there's some wording in there now that says um, if you're publishing data about events or places or organizations, so the types of things that are um, described in our standard model, then you should, you should really be using that model. Um, <clears throat> and if you're not, then it recommends that a publisher should be um, trying to document their non-standard model. So at least it's... Uh, described and useful for um, developers who uh, might be using their data. But this is part of trying to start to encourage people now to um, uh, converge on, on, the, on using the standards, all of the standards that we're producing, so we can get a consistent way of um, publishing data across the sector. Um, so those are the main changes. I'm, I'm planning um, an update to the primer this week. So having gone through rev um, rev uh, revisions to the other specifications, I'm going to update the tutorial documentation in the, the primer to include examples of uh, all of the new properties and address some of the questions that have come up uh, in some of the implementation discussions. Um, also include some, uh, a bit of extra guidance around managing uh, so not managing but publishing of personal data and some of the things that organizations should uh, should think about just as a way to uh, put a bit more guidance around that um so this is uh, all kind of uh, still part of the the, the plan i outlined last time around uh, moving us towards a kind of 1.0 release of the at least of at least the modeling spec uh, by the end of this month um my feeling is that we're we're kind of at a, a good uh, in a good position with that, that spec at the minute. Um, the for those people who have been implementing it recently, it seems like the spec um, is covering uh, a vast majority of um, the kind of use cases. In a few places, um, some of the publishers have used extra markup from schema.org, so that um, and that's fine and that's that's perfectly valid according to the spec. So. Um, I think it's, it's a good time now to kind of put a 1.0 stamp on it and then start to think about um, uh, you know, what 1.1 will look like and what revisions we want to make in the future. Um, in terms of process, um, uh, as the, the chair of the group, I can I just indicate that any one of our um, deliverables is a more formal specification from the community group. So W3C provides some tooling on that, but they, um, I'm still waiting on them to confirm uh, whether there's any additional process. Um, their documentation talks about asking for um, approval or kind of endorsements from members of the group to indicate that the, you know, everyone's happy with the specification kind of moving to that stage. Um, so I've, I've just queried with them what that actually involves. So that might mean that I need to come back to the group over the next week or so and, and just check in uh, with everyone and, and try and get those endorsements if we need them. Um, so I think what I would say is that I would say we're at the point where this is the kind of um, last call, last opportunity for uh, any 
uh, major revisions to the modeling specification as part of, you know, uh, before 1.0. So if you have any um, outstanding kind of comments or issues, now's the time to raise them. Um, I'm not saying that we'll necessarily address all of them in 1.0. Um, uh, we'll, you know, we need to make a decision on um, whether they are significant enough that we want to delay um, putting that 1.0 stamp on it further. Um, but I will kind of promise to um, uh, you know, look through everything that's raised um, and then make a decision on whether we need to include it in 1.0 or, or maybe bump it to, to 1.1. So this isn't, the, this is, by all means, this isn't gonna be the last version of the modeling specification. It will continue to evolve, but I think um, it would be useful to indicate that we've got to this uh, stable point by moving to the next stage in the W3C process. Um, so um, one one thing on them um, on on that uh, there's a few few people that have been using um, things from the specification that aren't actually in the specification but they're in schema.org um, and they're obviously referenced in the primer um, and uh, comments uh, I've heard around if you're consuming the data from these feeds because the scale of schema.org is pretty vast um, if you're going to write something that consumes all the available um, data from all these feeds to know what exactly you'd expect to see in there. Um, it's quite difficult because of the scheme that all kind of free reign you can you get as a, as a data publisher. Um, so it's almost, like, um, especially as we've um, also recommended that we don't include null values, that we'd rather um, leave out keys for um, those items that don't have the relevant values. And so what that means is you might get a feed like GLL where only 5% of the data has a particular key and that key is from scheme.org and so it's not referenced in the opportunity spec. It's only referenced in scheme.org. And so then when you are consuming that, you will not know about that unless you come across that key um, in some kind of manual testing or whether you spit it out as an error to say, I don't know what that data is and not, I'm not picking it up. Um, yeah. it, it makes it quite difficult to, to know what you're, you're going to expect. So I, I just wondered in how we were thinking about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good point. I mean, I, I mean, it's going to be an issue generally in the fact that uh, any any publisher can, can can extend the model. So there may be well, um, not just uh, incorporating properties from schema.org, but other kinds of local custom extensions. So um, it's um, it's something we probably need to have a policy around. But I, I, it's a, it's one I kind of struggle with a bit because um, the more that we tighten up the the schema, then the less flexibility we have about people using things that might be useful to them. Um, I mean, there's different there's different approaches that I think we can take. Some of it can be around um, uh, documentation of, of particular patterns, so encouraging um, uh, encouraging particular styles of using some of the markup from schema.org uh, in in the ways that people are publishing data, uh, and that's something that I'm hoping that the primer will do. Um, so it'll indicate, you know, this is this is how we're recommending we use these these extra elements. Um, uh, we could uh, include more of the schema or properties in the modeling spec, but I think that's a kind of we open the door to every time somebody wants to use a property that we have to revise the spec to kind of indicate that it's okay to use. So I didn't want to I didn't want to really go beyond the kind of core stuff that we have there at the moment. Um, uh, I mean, another option is to think about um, asking um, individual publishers to indicate which bits of the, the spec or which bits of schema.org they might be using, um, or in some ways for them to do that. Um, but I, I think, yeah, so I guess I don't, I don't have a, a single answer. It feels like it may, might be, need to be a combination of things. Um, Kind of validation tools, which we've we've done a little bit of work on, but haven't really moved forward very much yet, will also help. Maybe a, a, a super basic version of this. I, I just is just thinking off the top of my head is, um, if publishers were to publish a um, example of the output of their feed, which is most complete, i.e., all the features that are possible for their feed to output um, in in one place. So. Um, there's an example of one of the feeds which has got two different ways of displaying an event depending on the recurrence rule. So in one view, it's a single event, and if there's a recurrence, then there's multiple events. And obviously, if you're looking through that feed, if you have to happen across all the single events and miss the recurrence, then you'll have implemented the wrong stuff. Um, so you'll have to go through and like get that 
that's not written anywhere. You just have to, but both are in schema.org, both are valid. And so it is valid, but not obvious at all to someone that's just kind of looking at it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I like that example. I think providing illustrations is probably, probably good. You get a sense of the variety in, the, in a particular feed. Um, and that's kind of consistent with what you've been asking people to do um, to begin with in reviewing the, how they're publishing under the, the feed. So perhaps we can just incorporate that into the primer. I mean, at the moment, it's mo uh, most of the primers focusing on modeling things, but we can we can um, talk about um, these kind of more general implementation issues as well. So I'll add that my, to my list. Um, any other uh, comments on that progress update so far? Otherwise, I'll move on and talk about the, the activity list. Okay. Thank you, Right. Um, oh, actually, uh, yeah, I've got a question for Nick um, about the paging spec because you, you're you're the editor for the you know formally you're the editor for the paging spec. The the number of people have implemented it now. Um, I suppose my question is, um, I think we're currently at like point two nine or something. I mean, is it okay to call, should we do think about moving and calling it one point So we've got two version specs. Um, or do you think that there are issues on the backlog that need to be addressed before you kind of get to that point? Um, the issues on the backlog that need to be addressed are fairly well defined. Um, and we currently, every time we supply the spec, we also supply those uh, issues on the backlog. Well, there's actually a list of them in the, in the readme file um, as part of that so to supplement the spec. Sorry, I didn't mean I didn't mean like issues that people have with implementing it. I meant uh, there's like on the Git on the spec repo, there's a set of issues of potential changes to the spec. Uh, oh yeah, so any so yeah, any clarification points that are in there, we probably need to just fold into the spec, which doesn't change anything. It just makes it clearer. And then no, I, I don't think there's any suggested changes other than the license key being an, a required field which was something we've been outstanding for a while to just put in there um, we do need to say that it requires a license obviously whatever that license is ideally um, CC by um, okay. but, but that's the only addition I think everything else is just clarity but, um, I mean I'm happy to if we've got the, um, the, the build working now I'm happy to work um, quite quite quickly to fold those things in because like I said, it's not gonna, it, it, all existing implementations will conform to that. It's just because that's what everyone's been doing. We just need to make it really clear that that's what's happening. Okay, okay, okay. Well, you and I can uh, discuss that separately then. Um, but it'd be nice to kind of get that um, published through the W3Z process at the same, uh, the same time as the model and spec. Okay, uh, so activity list. Um, go back to my slides. So I've had a couple of chats, uh, chats with some of you about this uh, already. Um, uh, I just kind of want to share it with the group and for those who are kind of uh, following along on the video call. Um, so where we were at uh, recently is we had um, decided that we were going to move forward by um, combining the Sport Suite, uh, Sport England, and EMD activity lists, which had been um, shared with us for that purpose. Uh, and Sport Suite, so Kim and Becky had uh, spent some time um, putting, uh, putting together a draft list, um, which we, um, has been shared uh, with the group a couple of times already, um, along with some editorial guidelines. Um, so over the last week or so, I've been uh, taking a look at that work and trying to work out uh, the best way to move things forward. Um, so basically, there were there were two ways that we could have approached merging those lists. Uh, we could have chosen to just uh, take activities that are on, say, at least two of the lists, so that we ended up with a uh, a subset, but that was. Um, you know, just use the things that were that were common um, on the basis that um, 
that they're, they're most likely to be to be used in existing data and existing systems. Um, but having looked at that, lo looking at, the, I did some analysis on the kind of overlaps between the different lists, it would have meant, meant um, pretty much ignoring everything in the EMD list because that is focused on a particular, uh, particular area. Um, it, it didn't really overlap with the other two at all. Um, and it would have meant excluding um, uh, a, a number of recognized sports as well. So I didn't feel that was a kind of useful way forward. Um, so the other option was to do a, a proper merge of the lists, um, which is essentially what um, uh, uh, Becky had, had already started to undertake. So that's kind of combining together all of the lists to end up with a more comprehensive um, set, uh, comprehensive set of activities. Um, so um, that's currently currently where we're at with with the list. So what what I've done is I've kind of made sure that everything that is on the, the existing three lists has been added to um, our current editor's draft, um, and I've also checked to make sure that um, all of the uh, recognized sports are in there. I think uh, maybe not all of the disciplines, but all of the recognized sports should be in there. Um, but I've also uh, also checked and there aren't we haven't included any new terms um, so rather than add add new things to the list at this stage I wanted to get to a point where we could kind of easily communicate to anyone looking at the draft how we put it together and then have a have some sensible steps forward for improving it so the the shared uh, Google spreadsheet has got a separate tab now for um, a number of uh, new terms that could go on the list that um, Becky had identified when um, she was doing the merge. So we can look at those as a, as a, as a separate set of issues and exercise. Um, I've also assigned unique identifiers to all of the activities. So they all have a, a UUID now. So we've got a stable identifier. So that means that we can start to um, publish the list, um, at, but uh, give people a, uh, so give developers a way to, um, uh, start to link their activity lists or their systems to the list, even if we decide to later uh, change the structure of the list or change some of the labeling. So we have unique identifiers. Um, but in the process of adding in uh, descriptions and some synonyms, so um, uh, one of my uh, colleagues at the ODI is kind of working through, that started yesterday and do some more work today on adding in descriptions. Um, to try and make sure that as, as much of the possible the list is, uh, of the activities on the list are documented. Um, uh, and then as I emailed around, um, I've, I've gone ahead and published the list um, as a editor's draft. Um, uh, so it's now more than just a Google document. Um, there is a web page for it on the Open Active site and it's available in uh, a number of different machine readable versions um, under an open license. Um, and the reason I wanted to kind of do, wanted to do that, so we, we had, we just take stock and publish the list as it is, as a draft, is because um, uh, that in itself is a useful step forward. Um, in, in having an openly licensed resource will help, uh, will be a useful thing for the community. And I didn't want us, I didn't want uh, our uh, discussions around the scope of the list and structure to the list to impede or kind of hinder people using that as a resource. So really I'm thinking that the current editor's draft is a baseline that will, will evolve uh, and improve over the, over the coming weeks. Um, but you know, having spent a, a quite a bit of time uh, working through the detail of the list, just to see how, you know, how they compare, um, it, you know, it, it kind of brought home to me how, how time consuming it is to work through the full list. Um, so, um, you know, I appreciate that not everyone is going to be able to spend time kind of looking at the lists in detail. So I also wanted to try and find a way to surface what I think some of the key issues and key decisions that we need to make around um, uh, the kind of next steps with, with the list um, so that we could focus on those uh, as a group without necessarily asking everyone to kind of look at the, at the detailed list. So I've, uh, on GitHub, I've uh, filed a list of um, issues that I think we, uh, we should discuss. Um, we can look at some of those in a minute, but actually the, when um, we take a step back, most of them are actually about categorization issues. It's about the structure of the list 
rather than the content, I think, at this stage. Um, so uh, the, the, my kind of main observation for where at the moment is the list, while we've um, uh, allowed for two levels, so we've got a sort of set of top terms, level one, and a set of terms that are nested underneath that, level two, the list is still relatively flat. Most of the terms are at, at level one, um, but I think that some additional structure would make it easier for the list to use. Um, it would make it easy for um, to drive kind of discovery tools off it, e easy to drive kind of filtering. You know, if you if somebody's interested in finding activities of a, a particular type, um, it, you kind of want some structure to help them um, uh, find the things that they're interested in. Similarly, from a developer point of view, if you're only interested in a subset of the list, um, it would be helpful if the list was you know, structured in some useful ways to, to make it easy for you to just say, uh, import just all of the martial arts, for example, or all of the team sports, if that's a particular focus for you. Um, so, uh, so yeah, was somebody gonna uh, chip in there? Well, I was just gonna say uh, this, I'll, I'll just bring in Ben's point. He called me before this meeting, unfortunately he's not able to, um, to take the uh, the course that he's on holiday, but you wanted to make the point that um, the structure of the list being more than two levels deep is quite useful from a user experience point of view. Because if you've got, um, I think the example he gave from the existing list was that yoga and Bikram yoga are currently at the same level, which is actually inaccurate um, and, and is confusing to the user where they would expect one to be under the other. And he referenced a few other martial arts where that was the case where ideally you'd have martial arts at the first level. Um, and then I can't remember the name of the martial art, but then your specific Taekwondo or whatever. And then beneath that, the type of Taekwondo. Um, and uh, again, the, 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 the latter two are at the same level at the moment. And, and so his point was, uh, he felt quite strongly that it was currently inaccurate um, and that actually the user experience could be a lot better with, uh, with more levels in the hierarchy. Um, so that's yeah yeah uh, and yeah I, I, um, I came to the same opinion I, think I filed issues specifically around martial arts and yoga as two two areas where some more structure is, is I think would be useful um, the I think the the, the reason there are, there are reasons why the list is, is as it is in because I think um, some of they reflect some of the ways that the the source systems manage the data. So for example, uh, uh, maybe Becky can chip in, but I think um, from what she was telling me the other day that some of the ways that the, the level one, two is handled relates, on, relates partly to whether there's an NGB for the activity. So things might get moved around uh, on that basis. Whereas I think what we're trying to do is create a list which is, um, more, is, is kind of separated from those kind of concerns and from issues of how a particular database or system might want to nest things so that we've got a more uh, useful just kind of organization um, of, the, of the activities. Um, I mean looking at yoga specifically if you look at the AIT list that was shared with the with the group I think a week or so ago um, that has a useful categorization for yoga um, you know it breaks it down in, in, in a couple of different ways um, so we, you know, we could uh, combine that with the existing structure from the EMD list and create something that's a bit more accessible for people, I think. But I think if we focus on these kind of like reorganizing the things on the list, it's better just to, to do that rather than to think about what, what else to kind of bring in and out. So Neil, just on the kind of um, organization i think what we talked previously you know one of the things we did say was always ha using tags now whether those tags are with the collections because the thing that worries me is that the deeper and deeper you try and go in and trying to layer it the more complicated it gets and i think then it gets more you're more likely to start to unravel as in terms of what the ngbs will start to say because they'll start coming in and saying well that doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense and, and leaving it at a higher level kind of makes it easier if we want to leave the NGBs out of this conversation. Um, Ben's, Ben's point on that, Nick, was that if we're going to include, include Bikram Yoga, um, we should put it under yoga or not include it. Um, and I, I guess there's a merits to those, those two. But the, I, I think what, what he was saying was that currently Bikram Yoga being 
alongside yoga, just because we have a two level rule, um, is is not the is, is not best of the of the, uh, the compromises. Okay, no, that's that's fine. I just that, that some of these things, if we start to start breaking them up even further, it it will start to cause kind of more kind of issues. I mean, there are there are issues. Away, you know, when we talk about mountain biking, you see, it's it's a separate issue. But the governing body, British Cycling, mountain bike does come under British Cycling, and this is the bit where you will have to kind of through the collections or things like that, the terms of cycling or linking things together need to be linked across with those type of sports. Yeah, well, I think this is where having some um, you know, kind of editorial guidelines and kind of a policy for how we're kind of structuring the list will, might help. You know, that we're, we're creating a list that um, reflects what's useful for participants, not the way that sports are governed or, or managed. Um, but uh, also try and uh, highlight where we can use features of the model to group things together uh, in useful ways. So the, the kind of tagging thing you were talking about is, is what's called uh, what we've been calling collections. So uh, for, to me, collections are there to group, group together activities in more or less kind of arbitrary ways that might be for, uh, for governance reasons it might be because they're all Olympic sports or they're just all of the UK. So the Sport England um, recognised sports could be a collection. You know, there's, it's a useful way to, to look at the list. Whereas the, 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 the levels, levels one, two, three, however many we end up with, should be more about um, useful groupings of the activities themselves so that we do end up with you know, all of the variants of a particular activity, so all the variants of yoga should be nested under yoga um, because it means that as a, you know, from driving a search engine or discovery, I just want to find yoga and not, might not be interested in all of, you know, I, don't, I don't want to have to pick through a list of all, and, and all of the different types of yoga just to find a yoga class. Um, but uh, I'm, Jade and I were having a, a, a chat about some of this structural stuff yesterday, but it kind of feels like the NGBs ought to have some uh, input or some useful contribution to make around the structure. I was just um, thinking from what Nick Evans said as well, like um, you just need to be careful about getting the balance between ending up with a 12 month consultation and Getting their support at, at to get, make sure we've got all the, the categories in there. So perhaps um, I think it's, it's to do with what we were saying yesterday, Lee. We um, we make specific what we're asking of them. So it might be if we decide that we're going to have three levels, and we decide that yoga is at level two, that the consultation with the British Wheel of Yoga, for example, is have we got everything correct at level three? And then if we decide that the thing at level two would be cycling, the consultation with cycling would be, have we got everything collected at level three? So maybe the consultation, do we, do we just set what level the consultation is going to happen, happen at, rather than the whole list being under negotiation? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, like direct them in particular areas. I think asking them for, you know, can you give us all the variants of X um, is, is a, these so we decide that that that's going to be the level the level two and then ask for the variance of it rather than than having the ability to argue consult on what's level two and what's level one yeah 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 and it's worth making the point that um if we decide to add so if we we're going to um add uh, more levels uh, which the, the data model handles anyway, the mental, the, you know, the, um, the, we've, we've kind of made, made more or less an arbitrary decision to only have two levels initially. Um, we don't have to have that consistent li consistency across the entire list. So not everything needs to go to level three. You know, so we might just, we need to be, you know, we're gonna go really deep into yoga because that merits some more structure, but we don't need to do that for all of the other different varieties of, of sport. Yeah, it's, but because I, I noticed, for example, that again, using the, the AIT list, that that does have a consistent three levels. 
uh, which means that you have things like um, uh, I'll make up an example, but you've got kind of yoga, traditional yoga, and then traditional yoga general, because it's kind of there has to be something at the third level, which is often just a re repeat of what's at level two. But we d we don't want to do that kind of things because it just adds what's basically noise to the list. I mean, I don't know um, how the decision is to be made, but my vote would be with putting the level three in and just starting between us. I mean, I'm quite happy to take the group exercise stuff, starting to, between us to say, right, this, this would, what would be at level three, and yoga would be one of those examples where we could take a load from level two and three, and there'd be other things like Zumba as well, like it would be at level two, but we say, and all the Les Mills stuff and I'm quite happy to do that from the group exercise perspective. Yeah, I think I think that would be great. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think that'd be that'd be a useful a useful next step. Um, so I'm just thinking if there's other inputs into that. Um, it might be worth looking I mean you probably got a good grip on it anyway, but it might be worth looking at that AIT list just to see um, where there is some overlaps with the exercise stuff. Um, yeah. Is that in the, sorry, is it, that somewhere? Yeah, it got mailed to the list. I can, I'll, um, I can, I can follow up afterwards and send you a, a link to it. Um, is it worthwhile doing the same thing for some of the other, I think what Nick, supporting the Nick's thoughts are on this, is it worthwhile doing the same thing with level three with some of the other sports? Uh, I don't know at the moment. I mean, we'd have to have a direct engagement and, and see. I mean, I would be more trying to get them to agree some of the level two before um, we move a bit further. I mean, Emily, if, I think with your with movement and dance, you have that you have that level of depth. I'm not sure that occurs with a lot of the other sports, um, and you've got the knowledge at the moment. So I think I think I'd be more comfortable at the moment trying to get them to think about more about their level two than even going any further at the moment because a lot of them won't they haven't engaged in this process so coming up with this and putting it in front of them is going to take a lot of explaining to do so um, sorry Go ahead. oh i was going to say um one of the things we've um noticed with speaking to some ngbs is this is quite an easy question to answer i'm not sure if that's helpful so, for example, in fencing, um, the fencing saber, and there's three types of fencing which are very well defined and, and everyone knows them. Um, and so, when I said, what are, what are the kind of types of your, your activities that you have in the sport? They just said, well, three, look them up on Wikipedia. There's uh, whole pages about each of them. Um, and so, and the same with rowing, uh, about heart, um, moving seats and not moving seats or something. Um, that they, again, they were, they were like, well, these are very well defined, the sport's very old there's only a certain number of ways that you do this. Um, and so maybe for some, it's quite an easy answer and, and Wikipedia will probably have that information as a kind of uh, a source we can use almost to kind of, it's not just one person's opinion, there's, this is how it is. Um, but obviously there's others where um, this is, maybe there's a lot of debate about, you know, hardcore or some of the newer ones or Taekwondo, if there's North and South Korea, there might have internal politics, I don't know. Um, stuff which is, is, is more controversial but I don't, I don't know if we need to is it, is it a lowest common denominator approach or is it, is it possible for us to kind of find these e e easy wins here I think Nick the easiest way to do this is probably for your conversations you and Amanda's conversations with the NGBs about as they're talking about opening up their data is you run now we've got this list you run the list past them as part of that conversation so I think if you, if you try and send it to them cold outside they won't really understand the context for it so I think it, you just fold it into that, into those conversations. Yeah, yeah, happy to do that. I will um, I'll chat to Amanda after this. I think that's very, actually, it'd be quite easy to do because we don't have to explain the list. We can just ask the open question, how many activities do you have? And when they give an answer, we can say, oh, well, that's interesting because we've got a list over here that you could uh, do with your help of just checking a very small portion of it. Yeah, I think it'd be useful to do that because uh, I'm also a bit wary about getting them to sign off on the list because that it does feel like a, well, a heavier weight kind of consultation. Um, whereas, um, you know, we, we might want to organise the list based on, you know, actual actual user testing 
you know, when people are actually trying it out in, in applications. Um, so we might you know, not necessarily want to have to kind of re, re, um, renegotiate, you know, kind of support continually. So just kind of asking them for, you know, what, what are the X, you know, what are the different variants of your sport? Um, can you just check that they're on the list is a, is a simpler ask than a more formal endorsement. Um, just to, whilst we're talking about it, then um, the 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 other so that's kind of the other issue was um, on my desktop. Uh, hope you can see my browser there. Yeah, so there's a there's an issue around collections. Um, so at the moment. Um, uh, I think Sports Week in particular has quite a lot of uh, collections in its list, um, which we haven't included in the editor's draft because I wanted to have some discussion about them first. Um, so I've just pulled out the kind of list into this issue so that we can decide uh, which of these we might want to include or not. Um, so they have a kind of top level division of they have a broad division between sports and physical activities so we previously decided not to make that be a you know the top level split between our you know within our list um but they it could be featured as um as a collection you know if, if a developer is only interested in sports then it'd be way in um it might be useful to have the sport england recognized sports as um as a collection in here as well um but the rest of them are all uh, kind of groupings, I think, um, or kind of more natural groupings. Uh, so, you know, it's variations like ball games, water sports, racket sports, things that would potentially pull things together from across the list. Um, so it'd be useful to just get some feedback. Uh, we don't necessarily have to go through it in detail on the call now, but it'd be useful to just get some input on that list, whether we want, whether there's a few that we think we just definitely need or whether um, we just work out a process for adding these when people request them. It's, there's a kind of balance of uh, how much kind of structure do we want to find up, up front and how much do we just want to be driven by um, user needs. Um, but one thing I will call out is uh, handling of um, disabled sports. So in the process of merging, we've kind of ended up um, putting all of the uh, one of the kind of disabled sports, the kind of power sports under the main kind of variation. So the main, the main sport, so like wheelchair football is under football. Um, whereas it, I think some of the lists it was separate. Um, that felt to me like a kind of natural part of, of reorganizing the list, but I wasn't sure whether there was any sensitivities there that we would be aware of. Um, uh, so I, I think it would it might be useful to have at least have a, a collection of um, sports that are specifically targeted at people with disabilities uh, in addition to you know representing them in the in the hierarchy we one of those things for the um the disabilities um in uh, efts and those other folks to uh, comment on maybe not sure any of us are particularly qualified to, uh, to do so, but but certainly again, that's something we could uh, either as part of our engagement or, or outside of this, this conversation. Uh, some we could ask them the same questions we're asking the other NGBs. Um, is there a list that you would you point out? Or yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, so in terms of the, the what well, I think the next steps are. So, um, editor's draft is basically a baseline. As I said, it's something that we can start to to improve on. Um, so, I guess my ask to to you all here and anyone watching the video is to take a look at um, the issue list associated with the activity list um, and uh, provide some uh, provide any comments if you have them. Um, because those are, they're all kind of fairly general issues that will help inform the general the approach of how we uh, structure and manage the list going forward. If anyone does have time to look at the list in detail, you know, if the, if you want to um, suggest revisions to 
descriptions or additional synonyms or changes to labeling, then please do so. Um, and you can leave comments directly in the Google Doc. Uh, I can see Nick has started to, to do some of that. Um, it would be interesting to start uh, to get some feedback on how well um, the list actually works from a uh, developer point of view. Um, so that, I guess that's the kind of input that Ben has been providing. Um, but it'd be useful, useful to get some, uh, some more feedback on that. Um, and as we've just been discussing, I think starting to share the list beyond this group um, uh, would be a useful thing to do. Um, so I was planning to put together a kind of um, uh, a blog post that would summarize what we're doing um, with creating the list and where it would be useful to get inputs from, from different audience, uh, for different audiences and what, what type of uh, feedback we're looking for to help um, uh, help do that bit of engagement. Um, so just uh, in terms of being clear on how we do the feedback and suggest other people feedback, uh, one of the previous emails you sent around included um, collaborative tools for editing uh, ontologies or something, um, which, um, uh, so I didn't, I didn't get in, look, at, look at it in much detail around that, but um, what's your, I guess, suggested, so let's say that we speak to NGB tomorrow like fencing and they say actually there's Sabre, Foil and one other type of fencing and we, should, we think you should all be in there. Um, how would we ideally deliver that feedback into this process? Um, well, at the moment, it would. Um, well, at the moment, it's probably either filing an issue on GitHub or uh, adding notes to the Google Doc. Um, I did take a look at tooling, and there isn't really a great deal of, of tooling that supports collaborative development of this type of vocabulary. There are some uh, uh, tools that allow, um, you know, an editorial team to work to. Um, build out this kind of list, so review each other's work, that kind of thing. But um, they're not all web-based. Uh, you know, there's no obvious kind of hosted options. So um, we're a bit. I think we'll have to kind of continue to work within kind of Google Docs and the existing publication workflow, um, at least for now, anyway. Um, So I'll, um, I have started to, what I might do at some point is, uh, is, is to take a, another copy of the, uh, of the activity list um, and create some separate tabs and some structure in to indicate where people can make suggestions for, for new terms and revisions as a way to kind of manage the process a bit easier. Um, we may need to think the structure of the spreadsheet if we're going to start to move beyond uh, two or three levels anyway. Um, uh, okay, but I think if everyone's on board with just kind of focusing on the structure at the moment rather than any additional new terms, then I think um, that will help us um, build a bit of momentum around it. Um, that's, you know, that's not to say that adding new terms isn't, isn't a useful thing to do, but I just think rather than pile more into the list now and have more to reorganize, we might as well just kind of get a, a policy around how we're organizing the list and then start to build it out in, in other sections. So just to be clear, we're not yet going to NGBs and asking the question. We are primarily at the moment waiting for a consensus within this group on the organising the structure. And then maybe after the next call, we can start asking NGBs how many activities types we have and then digging it in. Is that right? Um, y yes, I, I think essentially. Yeah, I think there's some changes that we can do to... So uh, Jay's already volunteered to do some reorganisation. There's some refactoring of the list that we can do before we take it out wider. But I, I, but part in just highlighting there's, there's, there's currently, I think, 72 suggested additions, new terms to go into the list in the spreadsheet. So rather than debate those individually at the moment, I'd like to get the structure sorted and then, then incorporate them. Okay, so uh, we've got a... Um, a few minutes now before we wind up the call. Um, uh, I was going to give Jamie an opportunity just to kind of talk through um, some of the stuff that he shared earlier. Um, because we're coming to this point of having kind of 1.0 of the basic specs together, we need to think about what our roadmap is for future work. Um, so I, I call in a couple of weeks time, I want to focus specifically on roadmap there. Um, and I think things, questions around availability, booking and that kind of stuff is, is certainly what we want to start thinking about. 
Um, so I thought it'd be useful just for Jamie just to, to share what they're doing at this stage so that we can start to incorporate that into our planning and thinking. Great, thank you very much, Lee. Um, so guys, uh, I'm not sure if you saw the email I sent around earlier, but it had a, um, a link in it to a document with a very kind of basic overview of the sort of data we process on my local pitch. Um, and so to also give you the context that was within that email, here is an example of a sports venue with which we have integrated uh, through an API. And you can see that there. So in the calendar underneath the photograph, you'll see the um, uh, availability data for Salford Sports Village. Uh, and that comes from Gladstone. Um, so what we're trying to do at My Local Pitch, um, for those that don't know, is provide a search and booking portal for uh, sports facilities um, and just trying to make it as easy as possible to find what's available uh, and make a booking uh, ideally online. Um, and I think we're taking that kind of simplistic approach to the development side of it as well. Um, so uh, while there are understandably a lot of uh, complications around the um, data and nuances around the data you find within the software um, providers and the operators, we just try and process uh, only the bits that we need, uh, make it really structured and, um, uh, and, and make it easy to display then the site and then to make a booking. Uh, so to um, uh, have a look at the document, you'll see um, the, well, it's split into three parts really, the availability, the placing a booking and then the confirming a booking. Um, on the availability side, uh, we have um, just the essential data for a slot to exist. Uh, so it's got a start time and an end time, uh, ideally with the time zone attached to that. Uh, we've certainly seen some data that doesn't and the time zone is processed on the server side, but it's certainly our preference that that um, uh, doesn't happen and uh, we, we certainly publish our own data with the time zone. The price, uh, the currency and the availability is how many pitches or courts are available. Um, we then, you'll see a kind of uh, a slightly fuller set underneath that, which has um, what type of slot it is. Um, we've only really got one type at the moment. Uh, and then the idea of that slot, so that when it comes to placing a booking, it's uh, extremely easy to do so. Uh, we do take an approach to do a start time and an end time. Uh, I know that within the uh, opportunity data model, there is another approach to uh, put a duration onto that, and that's something we're looking at. Uh, but this is how we started, and, um, uh, and, and currently uh, it, it certainly makes sense. Uh, but we'd love to get some feedback on that, uh, perhaps. That's, that's not the biggest question. Um, so then uh, going down, we uh, uh, also then place a booking within the uh, software of, uh, for example, Gladstone. Um, uh, we, we process all of our payments through Stripe. Uh, we can then pass those payments on to a third party uh, processor such as WorldPay or StagePay. Uh, but all of these are payments uh, to begin with occur through Stripe. Uh, and that allows us to put a kind of Stripe token um, into the API. Uh, and for example, this of Sports Village. Um, uh, we, we put it in um, and the payment reference is a, uh, a Stripe token effectively and that proves the payment. Um, and then uh, we effectively request that booking from the software. Uh, and um, uh, obviously we hope to get a nice uh, 201 uh, response after that um, that will uh, uh, give some uh, confirmation to that, um, that that's gone through okay. Um, just thinking if there's anything else there that's important. We uh, always place a phone number within the booking software. Um, uh, uh, so we give that phone number to the venue in case they need to get in touch with the customer uh, last minute. We uh, give them the full name, of, obviously. We actually just keep the name as one field instead of trying to split it up. Um, if we do get a name that's in two fields, then um, uh, it's easier to put it together than to split it up. Uh, so, um, uh, do, do, do. 
Uh, I think that's just about it on the placing of booking. Uh, and then to get that booking confirmed, uh, we'll get a, a response back from the, from the software saying that that has gone through successfully, uh, what the price is, what the currency is. Uh, on certain providers, they also um, uh, uh, give us data, for example, the facility number, what pitch or court is the user playing on. Uh, for example, Power League, they have you know, 10 to 15 five-side pitches. We need to tell the user what pitch they're on. Uh, and any notes that um, uh, are required. So uh, there are some that require specific types of studs to account for the warranty of the sports pitches uh, and other, um, other nuances there. So that's, uh, that tends to be the, the list of data that we need uh, and that we provide uh, and uh, seems to be uh, uh, enough for, for certainly the people we are working with uh, so far. Uh, has anyone got any questions around that? Jamie, I have a question around just on the all looking at the sports page. Haven't they got more facilities in in terms of what Gladstones have made available to you? Are they just allowing you the potential at the moment to book? Just try and understand the timetable you've got. You think one facility per hour is what they're pushing through to you because they've got four, five side pitches. But when you look yeah. at a slot, say Wednesday the 24th, they've only got one slot at 1,400. Uh, so yes, that, uh, the number of availabilities come in. So we wouldn't want to list uh, all four pitches. So okay. the data that will come through from Gladstone will say how many available pitches are there. So what you'll see there yeah. could be four availabilities, it could be one availability. Yeah, I'm just looking at the time. So some of them are dead. yeah, okay. And so how do they, um, because they're interested on seven aside, they're dividing up the main pitch, is that right? So is that uh, yes. the back end of the Gladstone system? So they then do all that and then just pass you the availability? Uh, yes, exactly. I think there's that relationship there between the 11 aside and the seven aside. Um, yeah. And that seems to be fairly standard with the softwares we've worked with so far, where if yeah. one seven aside is booked, it knocks out the 11 aside um, and uh, vice versa. Yeah, because I think when we get to the booking, those are the kind of, that's why we'll need to have that bring in Gladstone with those kind of conversations, because once you get into that and you get into the problems of spaces like sports halls, that's the kind of yeah. stuff that we'd need to surface. Yeah, I mean, um, you may know that we've been working with Booking Bug for a while, and, uh, you know, that provides, um, uh, you know, a, a, a very sturdy, uh, but relatively basic uh, software that's kind of uh, uh, at its simplest level. Uh, and that deals with the uh, kind of sports hall uh, uh, question, you know, absolutely perfectly well. So if you have five badminton courts, you are able to um, uh, uh, come to what and where. And so you have five badminton courts and a five-side sports hall. Uh, and uh, that um, uh, 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 relationship works fairly, fairly easily. Uh, and of all the issues that we've come across with software, um, that's actually not something we've had a problem. Yeah, okay. So I had a couple of quick questions. Um, so, um, and interestingly, um, sitting in Fusion's office right now talking about the um, question of exposing facilities data from Gladstone, um, very similar challenge. Um, and, uh, and so uh, one of the questions that has come up is that a little bit outside in the document there where you've got the so that's a slot but then in in gladstone and in in, um, in others clarity there's there's a kind of schedule that sits behind that um and so what uh, are you getting the what would you ideally like to get only the available slots and and not the schedule that's behind them because the pricing changes between each or would you rather get um, I guess this seems like there's two different ways of doing it. Either you have the schedule and then you infer the slots from the schedule and you say which ones are full, um, which is how the Connect software in Gladstone works. Or you do it the other way around and say, this is where the empty slots are and this is how much they cost. Um, and this is the kind of products you can book. Um, mm. What have you found? Yeah. So we, I, mean, we, I think I understand your, your correct, uh, question correctly in that. Um, for example, with Salford, they gave us uh, an option to 
uh, you know, a start at quarter past, half past, quarter two, and on the hour. Um, whereas we just want to simplify that by saying, you know, the, the, the bookings on the hour or how the venue best structure it, uh, depending on the opening and closing times. Uh, so we don't, we don't pull the full schedule, we just request for uh, kind of the product, which is a booking starting at five o'clock um, uh, on the hour. Uh, and don't do that kind of um, uh, uh, that data processing on our side. So brilliant. So you're literally just getting slots. You're not getting schedules. Um, and no. those, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mate, that makes sense. Um, and that, that that's preferable for you. And there's no need to have a schedule for any of the other use cases. Uh, I mean, we could. It's one of those things that um, is the effort worth it uh, because most people. Uh, you know, are absolutely fine to start at five o'clock. That's the normal thing. And by us trying to normalize the uh, structure of the data, I think uh, we can just make it more simple. Um, importing a full schedule and then um, uh, uh, trying to work it out from there would just um, lead to issues, uh, undoubtedly, and uh, would make it more complicated. That makes sense. Um, so, so are Gladstone, are Gladstone doing that simplification work for you, or is that something that you're doing on top of their API? I think we we don't do it on top, but we uh, request. And I, I didn't obviously do the actual dev work on this, um, but as far as I'm aware, uh, we request bookings um, when we want to. So, is it on the hour? Uh, is it on the half hour? Uh, and then get a, a set of data based on that. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, so it would be useful to have. Okay, there's a, there's an interesting wider discussion then, I suppose, because obviously the way that you're doing it is asking a question of the system and it's giving you a response back. Um, whereas if the data was to be published openly, uh, it would be interesting whether to go into that extra level of granularity or whether we as a group decide that actually no one needs that. <laughs> and so let's just leave it as a, like standardize it as our slots across the board or something and just say, you know, whatever that is. Yeah, I, I um, from our perspective, uh, yeah, we would be interested in just, you know, creating the most simple case possible and then if needed, we'll build on that. But um, uh, I, I'm aware of other industries uh, or kind of um, other sports, for example, tenth and bowling, that uh, also create schedules. Um, but again, it's just a case for us of you know looking to get the kind of simple case uh, of, um, uh, of of just a booking on the hour uh, or whatever does make sense. Um, and the final question then, in terms of the product data that goes around this, so obviously that's, mm. the, that's the slot itself. Um, mm -hmm. but there's, a, there's a product, five-a-side football, whatever, at this venue, that's all, yeah. all kind of linked to that. How does that play in? Uh, yes, so we, we just uh, make a, uh, I believe, a separate call just to get the uh, data there, what, what type of facilities are uh, at that mm -hmm. venue. Um, but for us, we, we go through a kind of a process uh, called venue page mapping, where we, uh, using the data from one endpoint, end point, we put it within the uh, facility page on my local pitch. Um, I'm not actually, again, sure the exact process of that, because I don't do the work myself, but um, it's just uh, a case of tearing up uh, an endpoint with a, uh, a kind of facility ID on my local pitch. Okay, that's really interesting. Thank you. It's useful to get a, no problem. Get a sense of how that fits together. Thank you. Great. Um, I'm going to, it's just coming up for 10 past three, so I'm going to kind of wind us up. Um, so, um, yeah, so thanks everyone for, for coming along again uh, to this session. Uh, thanks to anyone who's uh, watching the video. Um, uh, just reiterate, I guess, my requests. Uh, just have a think about whether there's anything, uh, anything uh, major, whether you've got any major concerns or bits of feedback on the modeling spec that would stop us moving it to 1.0. Um, and have a look at the issues on the activity list um, to see if you've got any comments on the collections uh, and the approach to organizing it. Um, and I'll follow up with um, Jade separately about the. Um, some of the reorganizations you might be doing. So, great. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoons. Thank thanks, Lee. Cheers,
Bye. Bye. Bye.